In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about configuring your Spring Boot applications using Spring Profiles. Let's check it out. Here are the goals that we want our microservices to have when it comes to configuration. We want it to be externalized, environment specific. We want it to be consistent, have revision history and real-time management. What have we achieved so far with property files, property files, YAML files, whatever else? We have made it externalized, but that's about it. We haven't even made it environment specific. We kind of have made it environment specific, but we need something better. Now, what do I mean? Let me explain. So here, you have, let's say, a jar and some property files that you want to externalize outside the jar. We, we know how uh, properties can be read from outside the jar. You can put a property file in the same location as your jar. You can put system variables, a whole lot of stuff, right? So this is one way in which you can have environment-based configuration, right? You can say, okay, I want to take this property file for, let's say, dev, and deploy that to dev. The jar and the property file for dev goes to dev environment, jar and the property file for QA goes to QA environment, and jar and the property file for prod goes to prod environment. Can technically do this, right? You can have different property files for different environments, have the jar be deployed automatically, and then put the property file there after it's deployed. Can you do this? Well, technically you can, and you can have different values for different environments, but this is not good. Why? What are the drawbacks? Well, the first drawback is your property file is outside your any kind of control, right? Any kind of auditing. I said source code control in the slide, but it's not just that, any kind of control. You basically depend on some kind of a manual effort to say, hey, go wait for the deployment to happen. And after it's deployed, Put this property file in there make sure the right environment property file goes to the right environment you don't want to be putting prod property files into dev because oh man that's really bad right so there is a manual management across different environments so this is not ideal okay so how do you solve this problem well we're going to get one step closer to having environment sensitive configuration using spring profiles spring has this feature called profiles, which you can leverage in order to have different values for your configuration in different environments. Let me show you how. Here, I am going to start my application and notice what happens when um, this runs. I wanna look at the console messages here. Scroll over here. You notice this very second message. It says, no active profile set. Falling back to default profile, default. Okay, so Spring profiles are always in effect whether you're actively using it or not. If you're not actively using it, there is a default profile that is applicable in your Spring Boot applications. Okay, the default profile is what we've been looking at so far. You can think of a profile as a set of configuration values, okay? A set of configuration, a preset of configuration values go together in a group and form a profile. When you haven't been using profiles, all the configuration that we've applied, right? We've looked at some configuration, we wrote it in the property file, when we read it in the code, all those belong to the default profile. And by default, the default profile is active. You can, of course, create multiple other profiles. You can create a new profile and create a bunch of more configuration values there, and it's just gonna sit there. It's not gonna be used because the default profile is at an effect. But then you can say, hey, Spring, use that profile, in which case, it's gonna switch over to all those configuration values, okay? So here's how this works with Spring Boot. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new configuration file, okay? You have application.yaml. I'm gonna create a new file, a new YAML file. I'm gonna call this application-test.yaml. Now, what I've done by doing this is created a placeholder for new profile configuration. So here is the naming convention for creating these profile names, okay? So it's application dash 
profile name dot extension. Okay, so this is what we did. We created application dash test dot yaml. I said extension because it can be a dot properties or dot yaml, whatever it is. Application dash test dot yaml has basically created a new profile called test. Okay, so now what I can do is copy over the properties. Let me actually take this uh, YAML file current content and put it into the test YAML. Okay, and I'm gonna change one of them. I'm gonna change, let's say, the DB part. I'm gonna change this to test connection string here, and then the port is something else. Okay, so you see the difference here? The port is 2400, and the connection says, test connection string here, right? I'm making a couple of changes to application test.yaml. Now, if I were to restart my application and access the page, nothing changes. Why? Because like I said, the default profile is active by default. No surprise there. Now we need to tell Spring, hey, I have a different profile. When I'm running this application, I want you to take the test profile. Okay, now how do I do that? I can do that by going to my application.yaml file, right? This is the default profile. This is what's getting affected. Now I'm going to put this configuration here, spring.profiles.active colon test. Okay, I'm saying I want the active profile to be test. And now if I were to restart the application and access Well, first let's look at this console. You see here, the following profiles are active, test, right? Now the test profile is active. Okay, now I can load the page, reload, and see the test value is showing up. Okay, so I switched profiles to the test profile and it picks up the value, which is in my application dash test YAML file. Okay, so this is what I had to do created a new profile and I told Spring to use that profile. How did I create a new profile? By creating a new configuration file with the application dash profile name convention, naming convention. And how did I tell Spring to access that profile, to switch to that profile? By adding a configuration to application.yaml, which is the default profile and saying, the active profile is name of active profile. Okay, now you might be wondering, isn't that a little bit odd? You're telling Spring to go look at that property file. The way you're telling it Spring to go look at the property file is by putting the configuration in this property file. Isn't that odd? Well, if you are suspicious about how this is a little odd, well, you're not off. What's happening here is that the default profile is always active, okay? The default profile, what's in your application.yaml or application.properties is always active. So you can safely put your profile selection in the default profile in your application.properties or application.yaml and it is gonna affect what Spring does. Just because you tell it to go look at that profile doesn't mean it's not looking at this profile, okay? That's the con confusion that a lot of people have. Whatever is in your application.blah, properties or YAML or whatever else, is always active. When you activate a profile, when you say active profile is test, the configuration in your test profile is gonna sit on top of it, okay? So let's say you have default profile property name equals foo, and in your test profile property name equals blah, what gets actually picked up is blah, okay? Test is gonna override your default profile. So you can technically have multiple profiles. At any point of time, when you choose a profile, you actually have two profiles active. One is your test profile, and the other is the default profile, which is always active. So if you have some set of keys in your application.yaml, and some other set of keys in your application-test.yaml, and then the test profile is active, what gets activated? The total set of keys that Spring is seeing is a combination of those, right? If there is something in your default and not in test, it still applies even though your profile is test. But if you have the same keys in both application and test, the winner is what's in your active profile, in which case it is test. You can have 
more than one active profile though. So you can have test-QA1 active profile, in which case the test-QA1 is in addition to what you have in default and test. If you have more than one active profile, I think what the way it overrides is in the order in which you specify the active profiles. So if you have test QA specified after test, the values in test QA overrides test. But anything that you specify in your profile always overrides your default profile. Okay, so you can have multiple profiles. Now, how is this helpful? You can create different property files for different environments, okay? Let's say you have your application deployed into dev, QA, and prod. Those are your environments where you deploy your microservices. In dev, you have a connection string property pointing to your dev box. In QA properties, you have your connection string proper pointing to your QA connection database. And then in prod property file, it points to prod. Fairly obvious, right? For all the common things which don't change from environment to environment, guess what? You can put it in the default profile. You don't have to copy all the property files across multiple environment property files, okay? So you can just put the majority, the bulk in your default profile, and then only the ones which change from environment to environment, put it into those different um, profile settings. So you have technically created one jar file, which can be deployed into multiple environments. Have we achieved environment specific configuration without modifying anything? Well, no, because what is choosing this profile? That's still sitting in your default profile, right? So you, when you said active profile is test, you put that configuration in your default profile and that thing is sitting inside your jar. Isn't that a problem? Well, no, it's not a problem because guess what? You can choose profile, you can override that by passing command line arguments. Okay, you can easily do something like this. If you have Java dash jar and your configuration jar, well, you can override what the active profile is in your command line. So you can say, when you're running this jar in a QA environment, you can say dash dash spring.profiles.active equals test. When you're running this jar in production, you can say dash dash springs.profile.active equals prod. So there you go, you have achieved the essential goal that we were trying to achieve, right? So now you can have environment-based configuration, but all of them sitting inside your jar, you just choose the profile where you're running using command line, there you go. Environment-specific configuration achieved without having to modify the jar. And now all that configuration sits inside your source code, no manual effort to say, okay, I'm gonna put this property in this environment, remembering to do that. All you need to remember to do is to pass the right uh, profile name in your command line argument. This is, I'm assuming, scripted. So you're gonna be putting one script there and it's always gonna be the same. It's not gonna change. So there you have it. One other powerful feature of this thing is not only can you configure different values for your, prof for your profiles, profiles actually allow you to choose different beans depending on the profile, which is super powerful. You need to be careful about how to use this feature though you can easily go overboard with this. But if you're careful, this is, can be very powerful. I'll show you how to use this. So let's say you have a repository bean, okay? This is something that it's a data source bean which connects to your database and has methods which retrieve data from your database. And this connects to your production data source only, okay? And now let's say you have a separate bean which is your local data source bean, right? This is something which needs to take effect only locally. When you're running the application locally, you only want the local data source bean to be instantiated. When you're running this application in production, you want the actual data source bean to be instantiated. Well, guess what you can do? You can put this at profile annotation on top of your bean and say, this is dev profile bean, and this is production profile bean. Now guess what happens? When your application is running in dev profile, Spring Boot is gonna initialize the local data source bean. If your application is running in production, Spring Boot is gonna initialize the production profile data source bean, okay? So you essentially have different beans being instantiated by the container depending on the profile. Isn't that cool? Now you can technically have 
logic. It's not just configuration, right? You can have logic, you can have beans, have different instantiations depending on the profile, okay? But you might think, wait a minute, we didn't actually do this. What happens if you don't have a profile annotation set? Well, you can guess the default profile takes effect, right? By default, when you don't have an ad profile, it's equivalent to doing ad profile of default. So that's what's happening. By default, all beans are instantiated. Even if you set a profile, right? If you haven't used the ad profile annotation on a bean, there's no profile specific annotation when you ran the test profile, right? There's no beans with test annotation, profile test annotation. So by default, all the beans are instantiated because all the beans are in the default profile, right? Remember, default profile is at the base and then all these other profiles are take effect. So if you don't have anything in that profile, every bean is instantiated because it's the default profile. However, note that there can only be one bean of a particular type for the container to be instantiated, right? So when you do a dependency injection for whatever is the interface for the data source bean, right? So you have the data source bean and then the local data source bean, and you have something which is injecting the data source, the interface, right? There can only be one. Depends on what the profile is. If you have a specific profile which overrides the default, that particular instance is what gets injected to whoever is auto-wiring it, for example. Super powerful, but be careful when you use it because you don't want to create too many variations of business logic. That can be painful. Treat it like an extension of configuration, but can be used for more than configuration. Now, speaking of more than configuration, there is another feature in which you can detect information about the configuration and use it in your code, which is another way to get configuration apart from value and config prop and all those other things we've seen so far. And that is using the environment object. Check out this next tutorial where I tell you what the environment object is and how we can actually use it in your code.